Okay, all this is Todd itinerant here to do an unboxing of uh, Montelimar. Is it Montelimar? Montelimar. I should have looked that up before I started this video, but that's not the way I roll. Liberation Volume 1, Montelimar, The Un Anvil of Fate, CSS by Compass Games. So this is my first ever Compass Games, and uh, I don't believe there's an unboxing video yet, so I'll make one here. Uh, so I played a the CSS game Saipan, and I was kind of lukewarm on it. I think I was kind of in a different headspace when I played, and you know, it's just kind of a different kind of game. We only got like a turn or two in. The guy teaching me um, was awesome. Uh, dad, a friend of mine at uh, work, and I'll probably play him in this one here. He's here in my town, so we'll try to connect up and do that. But anyway, there was enough with the system that I was like, you know, I want to try it again, and maybe I'll start with the European theater that I'm used to. So I'm gonna give it a shot again, but um, so I'm gonna give you a little unboxing. Uh, of the, try to do it a little differently than I do. You're not gonna see me open the box and all that. But anyway, that's the box lid there, and as you can see behind it is the map. I guess we'll go ahead and show you the map since uh, it's out and all that. So it's kind of big. Um, I've got it on my son's ping pong table, and I decided to leave the net up so you can kind of see how big it is. It just slid it under the net. Um, so anyway, so here's a uh, here's a piece. Here's a couple of infantry units to get and give you a sense of scale. These guys can move five, I don't know, it's called movement points or whatever, and I don't have the chart in front of me, but imagine they can move five. There's 60 hexes down the whole map, so it would take them 12 turns to move. If, you know, I'm, I have no idea, I've not read the rules, but and you know movement rates and all that but anyway there's 60 hexes um, from the top to the bottom here I guess north and south yeah north and south and then one through 83 wide so let's just, just get a big picture of the whole thing here it's gonna get a little shaky apologize in advance so there we go the whole map Montelamar is the town in France and so this is kind of the southern uh, part of France um, so it's kind of cool it's a little different than you know the normal D-Day and Cobra and Breakout and Fillets and uh, and kind of all that so it's a little kind of fun that it's different there so there's Montelamare I don't know the towns you know if this was good I would have looked up uh, regional maps and shown you all that there's Crest if that means anything to anybody over there by the, the by the fin by the, by the net um, but let's just look at the map real quick here. You can see orchards and uh, rivers, fields, elevation changes. Uh, pretty cool looking. Looks good in uh, photo and video. It's pretty wide and sprawling. Quite different than Guam and Saipan. Lots of open ground, really. I am big river floating down. And then under the net here, you got it's a little bit hillier over here um, on the east side. So that's the map, and you can kind of see the size. Now, there are several scenarios, so you do not have to use, you know, you're not always using the whole map. So let me get the... Got your... Uh, well, that's the scenario book. And the rule book, which is generally the series rules. And if you flip it open, let's see if I can show you here. I like it. They describe, show all the, all the, they show all the chits and what they, all the counters and what, not all of them, but they show you many of them and give you very good details about all the status markers, leaders HQ, miscellaneous markers. Um, so the general CSS rules have a marking and then the ones that are maybe specific to uh, Monte Lamar is, uh, maybe I'll just say Monte. Uh, Monte uh, have the uh, arrowhead on there. So it's a uh, pretty, it's a nice, it's uh, not a glossy paper, which is cool, that's nice. I mean, they explain it very well, all the little numbers, what they colors and all that on the, on the counters. Uh, the hex dot it tells you the terrain type. I think that's a something from GTS as well, I believe. Um, and it tells you all the game charts and tail. I just very clear a lot of that sequence of play. 
I'll just do a real quick flip through. Oh, um, kind of show you all the units in a formation and activation, which is kind of cool. Again, very clearly illustrated, you know, lots of examples. Um, when I get start playing, I'll kind of go over some of the, I'm not gonna probably do any like uh, turn by turn um, how to play type of videos. It's not usually one of my strengths, but uh, I'll definitely go and show as I learn some of the rules and things. Heroes, leaders, transport, air power, what would they have, whiskey and I don't know, schnapps or something, dogs. I think they have, I think dogs are in Guam. Uh, bourbon, bourbon and cognac. Um, I don't even know what those do. So anyway, and then so it's 20, uh, 39 pages, 40. And even the, even continuing, they keep telling you what some of the things mean. Oh, some of the Guam errata counters. Uh, anyway, just a nice feel. And then the scenario book. Now, I mean, it's just really a lot of thought behind the illustration or what, what's in the game, uh, instructions and all that. So the, the um, scenarios, looks like we have uh, one, two, instead of these all, yeah, so eight scenarios. And then a very nice detailed, you know, which maps are which, there's five maps, how they lay out, how they overlap, I mean, you can figure it out, but it's nice. Um, it just shows you the whole thing. You could make a color copy of that, I suppose, and make some plans and do things like that. Uh, one thing I noticed in here that I thought was pretty cool. So, you know, they have like three, the first three are kind of, they say introduction, but it's kind of cool because it says here, it kind of gives an ex description of what's going on. And it says, this is an ideal scenario to learn the core concepts. And you kind of keep going through and they all have something. I'd say this is one thing it would be nice to have separate sheets, but it's more printing. I don't know, I guess you can just make a copy, but the setup sheets are in the scenario book. It'd be nice if they were a separate sheet of paper because the reinforcements are here. But maybe, yeah, it would be nice because it shows you where they come in too. So you might be making copies of these. Um, another, this is another good scenario to tackle and learn some of the core systems of S, uh, CSS. Small number of units, really. And I can't remember which one Kevin played in his video. Big Board played one. I think it was... Uh... Hmm. I'm not really sure which one he played. So, anyway. Kevin, he didn't play. have a whole video on it, but he kind of talks about his experience with it. Scenario 3. This scenario is an excellent scenario for those who want the feel of a larger campaign game without the time needed to spend on the whole game. Anyway, just pretty cool. Like, I like the description. Anyway, that's that. And again, another abbreviated sequence of play. So just more, more tools there. Um, very nice, thick date, time, and weather display. I may have to, if I play the campaign game, I will have to use my son's ping pong table. I'm sure he'll love that. Fits perfectly, uh, actually. So this will be on there. I can kind of see, I got a, I'd have to, I'd have to get different plexi. I have a lot of plexi, but it's kind of just all variety of sizes. I'd probably want to get nice, big ones cut for this. You know, I don't know how looking at the daytime weather display got me on that track, but all right, so that's that very nice thick pork card stock. Two dice, I love D10s, something different. Um, charts and tables, nice, uh, just lots of color. Um, there were some people complaining about the like little weathering or the messiness on it. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's okay. Um, I'm, in, I'm indifferent. But pretty clear there. And then on the back of that, so you get two. So that's a good thing, right? Um, and that's the terrain chart. Pretty simple, but again, with the color identifiers. Sorry for me flipping you off. And uh, terrain key. So what it looks like, but then also the dots. Um, Anyway, there's that. Again, all this is on a nice thick cardstock here. So we got the uh, sequence of play again, just on another sheet, another way. Lots of little details here. Um, but that's what you get with a game like this. Okay. These are the German forces. 
And you got uh, for 2nd Panzer Division, or is that 11th Panzer? 338th Infantry Division, 198th Infantry Division, 45th Infantry Division, 3rd Infantry Division for the Allies, 36th and Task Force Butler. So, routed units, airstrikes available, transport pool, relocate, um, sorry, reallocating support weapons, available support weapons, available heroes. So as your command rating dispatch, max troops. I kinda, I'll have to go through them. I haven't played it enough to know. General record strike, I don't know. Oh, for your command points, command, uh, combat command, Sudri. Sudra. Sudra, whatever. Uh, okay. counters as you saw two on the map to show I just wanted to show the scale I really wanted to get there now I have to figure out where I'm going to put those it does not come with plastic wait maybe I don't know where that plastic bag I, I, did it come with one plastic bag for counters hmm I guess uh, the box is pretty small for counter trays I'm not sure how that's going to work anyway I have to see how people are sorting this that so it looks like some of the allies. The chits are pretty easy to come out, so I want to be careful. I don't, I'm not really ready to do that yet. French forces, more American. There's five of these sheets, six, six of these sheets. German, some French, more German. 11th Infantry Division. Not a whole lot for me to say here. Just kind of smoke, concentrated fire, uh, barrages, foxholes, bridges, shell holes, foxholes, disorganized levels, pillboxes, disorganized air support. There you go. I guess I should be laying all this out. Um, most important, most important, your your Compass Games um, catalog from the holidays. So if you order this game or get this game used 20 years from now, you'll have this as well. It's kind of quaint, it's kind of an old school way of doing things, but you know, as a marketing guy, it's not bad. I'll look through it, even though I've probably seen a lot of them, but you know, I don't know their whole catalog as it were, so, so not, not a bad idea. Um... Here's the back of the box. I mean, let's just show you everything, right? It's kind of your normal box back. Tells you complexity. Looks like it's about a seven. Playing time is well, two hours to fifty. I don't know, fifty hours is what it says, but two hours. It's pretty small. Thousand fifty six pieces. Five twenty two by three four maps. Solitaire rating is most almost high. An evaluation. Well, that's kind of interesting. So there's that. It's a smaller box, so probably two inch, I'm guessing. I haven't measured it, but yeah, two inch. Compared to the three inch box that my Normandy game and tri pack came in. So that's it. That's everything that comes in the box for Montemere. Um I guess one thing I, I already told you that, I gave you the told you all the scenarios. So that's pretty much it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. That's the that's the unboxing of Montelemar. Let me get the here. Let me show you everything here. Just a minute. All right, so it's gonna get shaky again. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna stick this off the tripod here. Let's back out here. So there's the map. And there's everything else. Pretty impressive. I don't remember the price of the game. Doesn't matter, find your favorite game store. I bought this one from NWS. Um, just got it today. Yeah, today. So there you go. I keep wanting just to show it. There's just so much cool stuff, man. And now I just got to play it. And I was just thinking, as I was putting this stuff out, it's like, how cool would it be just to have a very long, a long, it'd be a long weekend. If you could take a Friday off, it'd probably be better. So you could have three full days, because you know you're not going to play consistently. If it's 50 hours, wait, 50 hours, wait a minute, that's that's two days, that's 48, that's no, you couldn't do it that quick, I guess, that's crazy, uh, that'd be no breaks, um, 
two weekends maybe? 48 hours, golly. Boy, that'd, that'd be three long week, two long weekends. Anyway, wow. Um, but I, I guess I like the idea of concentrating it instead of dragging it out for months because then I may not ever, you know, how those things happen. Anyway, I'm just going to be quiet for a minute. Just take it all in. All right. That's that. Montem I'm like, I really got to quit saying it. And I should have, you know, looked it up, how to pronounce it. But there it is. Anvil of Fate. Uh, look for some more videos. I'm sure Kev will have some more. And I'm sure some other people will come out with some. Um, with uh, higher quality. Um, anyway, we'll talk to you later. It's been fun. See ya.